So now we've had a look at contact resource. Let's just have a look at contact service, see how we can modernize this one just a little bit more as well. Now you can see what we're using in our contact service is a factory, a factory which is, has a kind of a constructor function here, and we're creating a self object, and then I'm returning the self object at the end. And, then, and the object itself has a couple of uh, properties of functions um, and stuff like that really. And one common way, this, this, this is a pretty common way we, we had for creating services and factories in AngularJS. Now the way I would rewrite this in a more modern AngularJS format, so we're still working on AngularJS, remember we're not working on Angular yet, we're just modernizing our AngularJS. So how I would make this a bit more mo modern is by converting this into a class, just the same way as we did with the contact resource. So let me start off with that. Let's just start off. I'm going to do export again. Class. I'm going to call it contact service. Okay. I'm going to give it a bunch of properties and I'm just going to paste them in just to save a little bit of time there. So we've got various things that we're doing. Now remember, this is a pretty large service I had previously. So this is going to be a pretty large class in the end. But I think the class format, the class syntax here is going to be a lot clearer to understand what's going on than viewing kind of one of these factory functions at the top. So a few things we're going to need. Well, one, we're going to need to inject our contact service. So this is a contact resource we just refactored earlier on. So I'm going to create a private variable for that. And we've also got a property called toaster. And the toaster is that little UI component, which is whenever you delete something or edit something or save something, that little toaster uh, that little green thing that appears in the top right corner of our application just for a few seconds to let us know uh, everything's okay. That's called a toaster. So that's the toaster service. This is something to hold that. And the rest of this is just kind of state for our application, for our uh, uh, service itself. So I'm going to create a constructor. Um, and remember our constructor is how we inject stuff in to our application. So the things we want to inject in, if you remember, is the contact and the toaster. So I'm going to inject in contact and I'm going to inject in toaster. And just the same as before, we need to store that somewhere so we can refer to it from our other functions. So we need to store that in these properties, so this property contact and toaster. I'm just storing it there for now. So we're not also we're also not including dollar Q. Now dollar Q is basically the angular JS way of dealing with promises. But now promises are a core feature of JavaScript and therefore they're available in TypeScript. So we don't actually need the $Q service anymore. We've got another syntax for dealing with promises. And actually because we don't have scopes anymore in Angular, uh, we need to kind of avoid scopes uh, at all costs. So we're removing the scope property here and, and we're not dealing with, with the solution using scopes. In fact, I don't think I'm even using a root scope here anymore anyway. So that was probably an erroneous uh, an extra injection which I didn't need in the first place. So I apologize about that. So now what we need to do is we need to basically convert these functions into functions on our class. So actually, let me start off with a get person one. I'm just, just going to copy it from our object here. I'm going to paste it into our class and then I'm going to reformat it so it works with our class. Again, we've got the get person function and it accepts an email. So we don't need to provide that function. We can just have a syntax like this. And then if I wanted to, I could still log it out and that's fine. That's not a problem. That was just something I added for debug purposes. But then you see here, we've got a for loop. We've got for, I'm using var, I'm using a, a, an old style for loop. And I'm looping over a person's array. Now in ES6, in modern JavaScript, we have a new syntax for this, which is essentially the for of loop. And that's what I'm going to use here instead of this old style for loop. So I'm going to do for let person of this person's. Now I know person's doesn't exist right now, but we're going to uh, fill that out later on. And now what I can do is now I can check if, in fact, I can just take this here, copy it here. So if the person dot email, and I'm actually, that's not the correct, that should be triple equals. If the person dot email is equal to the email pass in, then return the person. Okay, so I've now replaced this kind of old style uh, JavaScript, ES5 JavaScript with this kind of new style ES6 JavaScript or, or TypeScript, which makes it much more pleasant to work with.
So now I'm just going to go through and let me just do a couple of these other ones. So let's do do search. This should be a very, very simple one. In fact, let's do both of these. These should be very, very simple. Let me paste them up there. And again, I don't need that specify it's a function. And here I can just replace self with this. I'm just going to do that for all of them. And there we go. And in fact, let me just tab this in so it's in the right space. Now you can see it's complaining about load contacts because it doesn't actually exist yet on our class. So let's add that one in actually. So that's the next one here. Load contacts comes to here. Let's tab it down so it's in the right place. And here we go. I'm going to replace this self with this. We're not going to use var anymore. We're going to use let. Very self with this. Again, it's this.contact.query. And also our contact resource, the query, is returning the HTTP get. Now the HTTP get actually returns a promise. So to use, whereas this old format was we, we could pass in a callback function, now it's returning a promise. So with promises, we do dot then, and then we can pass a callback function. And again, we can just get rid of this old style function and use ES6 for our syntax. Okay, now we have another loop. So we were using Angular for each before, and now again, I just want to use the for of. So for, let person of res, oh sorry, it's not, I, I should have called it res, res dot persons, in fact, let's call that res. So now we're looping through whatever is returned by the query API. And I want to push all that stuff onto our persons array. So I'm going to do this dot persons push. Now I don't want to pass in, this was how we used to do it with ng resource. We don't do that anymore. But I just literally just want to pass in the person object itself. And then if res dot length is equal to zero, then set some data on this. And let's set some data on this. So that I believe is our load contacts done. The next one I'm going to add is update contact. And I think after update contact, I'm just going to do the rest myself and you can perhaps do it as an exercise because that's, I think, perhaps all of the examples that you need for how to modernize this file. The rest of it will just be pretty boring watching me doing the same thing again and again. So let me make sure I'm on the right one. That's the wrong one. Wrong, wrong, right. So now let's add update contact again. Let's get rid of that there tab back. Now the reason I want to show you this is because here we're using the queue object. Now as I said before, we're not using queue anymore. Queue is old Angular JS style method of doing promises. In the modern JavaScript world, we have promises built in natively into language. So we're going to do that or use that instead. So the new syntax is something like this. And again, I have all of this available for my website for free on my Angular course. So if you want to freshen up on promises, go on to there and, and check out that section. Promise, and I want to, it's got a callback function which has two properties, resolve and reject, like this. And then what I'll want to do is I want to take the body of this, so this body here, and paste that into there. I don't need that anymore. And again, just like before, it's not self is saving, it's this is saving. So let's replace all the selves. Again, it's this.toaster.pop. And we don't call d.resolve, that was the old way. We actually are already passed in a resolve function. We want to call that one, so we just call resolve there. And also we don't have this kind of uh, ng resource style per instance function anymore. We need to call our contact service, uh, we need to call the update function because we're updating a person. We're passing in the person that's passed into this function here. And again, this returns a promise. So we use that then syntax. We actually don't care what the result is, what the prop what's returned from the promise. So we pass that in there. Then this 
is what we pass in here. And I think, yep, that looks pretty good to me. Let's format the document. Okay, everything looks pretty good. So when the update contact is called, we pass in a person. We then return a promise. Within the body of the promise, let's get executed immediately. The is saving flag is set to true. Then we call our contact service with the person object that we're trying to update. When that finally gets saved on the server and returned, then the then handler is called. We then set saving to false, and then we pop up that little toaster, and then we call resolve. So anything that's kind of waiting, any then that you attach to this update contact will then be executed. So that's how we do the update contact as well. So what I'm gonna do now, so let's uh, scrap that. So that's the update contact completed. What I'm going to do now is I'm gonna flesh out the rest of these functions and make them all, modernize them all in a modern uh, AngularJS style using TypeScript. And I'll see you back here in a second. If you wanna follow along, then pause the video here and you also have a go at changing the remove contact, the create contact, and I think the other one we wanna update is a load more as well. So why don't you have a go at updating those and modernizing those and I'll see you back here in a second. Okay, so now we're back. I've now completed, I've added or I've modernized the remove contact, create contact and load more functions as well. So the final thing I need to do is I need to basically get rid of this old code at the bottom. So I'm just gonna get rid of all of this here. And it's still called a contact service. We don't wanna use a factory method. We wanna use a service method. And I'm going to return the contact service at the end there. And actually, the very, very final thing I want to do, which I didn't add in here, is when we initially instantiate this service, I actually want to load all the contacts in the back end. So as soon as this service gets instantiated, I want to load the contacts. I'm going to call this dot load contacts. And there we go, and we've now modernized our contact service as well. You can see it looks pretty cool. We're using classes, we're using TypeScript, we've got private methods, uh, we're using constructors. It's all pretty modern. And we've also got four of, and we're using promises, uh, the built-in promise syntax instead of $Q. So it looks pretty good. Now, so it looks pretty good. Now let's just see if it compiles. So if I go into my terminal, here we are, and I'm going to run npm run build, and let's just see if there's any issues. Okay, we actually look pretty good, excellent. So everything looks like it's compiled fine. Let's now run our application to make sure everything's fine. So um, npm run server, and then also npm start. Okay, so let's now refresh to see if it's working. Okay, it doesn't seem to be working. Let's have a look at the console, see what I've done wrong. So I have an error. Can I read property length of undefined? I remember a length property somewhere in my code. I know what the problem is here. So it's actually not the, <laughs> the data is returned as a data property. In fact, that is wrong as well. So it's actually res data. And in fact, I don't want to check for the res data length. I just want to see if if not, if no data is returned, then there's nothing else. Yep, that looks good to me. Let me run that again. So you're gonna you're gonna hit these problems really, really often, um, and then just don't just always make sure that you develop a little bit, then test a little bit, develop a little bit, then test a little bit, and only then, if you do it that way, then finding the bugs will be really really easy because you'll recognize a few of the a few of the lines or, or, of errors there, a few of the error lines there. Okay, yeah, so it looks like it's working now. Yep, everything's working. Delete's working, edit's working, search. Yep, search is working. So yeah, everything seems to be working just the same as before now. Yeah, even infinite scroll. Okay, so what else could you could you change here right now? Well, the only other thing you could really change is filters, but there's not really much point in doing that because filters have to be rewritten in Angular, but you can if you wanted to make this a little bit more uh, modernized for the time being. And yeah, this is just what I recommend is go through your code and just take this opportunity in this step just to modernize as much as possible your Angular JS application. And it's a really, really fun part of the whole process. In fact, often when I'm teaching this to clients, other students, they'll often stop at this step. So your intention at the start was to migrate your Angular JS application over to Angular 
but quite often after they've modernized their Angular uh, Angular JS application, after they've started using the latest version of Angular JS, after they've started using TypeScript, and after they've started using a, a modern build tools like Webpack, then overall your legacy Angular JS application is now starting to look really pretty decent and modern and up to date and pleasant to work with and pleasant to develop with. So yeah, take it as you as you want. But just trust me, this is a really fun step in the whole process. Make sure you have fun. It's a great learning experience as well. It's a great opportunity to learn more about TypeScript and more about modern JavaScript features and just go wild. This step can take as long or as little as you want, but just make sure you've modernized your whole application before you move to the next step because the next step is a very, very important step and it's where we start, start dual booting with both Angular JS and Angular.